situation. As you can see, I've got a little bit of work done here. Um, there was some nasty blue carpet that was down here, and um, I got that tore out. And this bed had a plywood hydraulic cover on it, so the cover would raise up and down on hydraulics. And um, it the the crease was actually right here, so there was a joint there with two hinges and so all I did to get that off was I took the screws out I actually took the screws out of the hydraulic jacks that were mounted here and on this side here um, with the top uh, expanded upward so there wasn't any real pressure on the hydraulic arms and uh, that way I didn't have to worry about it popping off in my face when I took the screws out and um, that left the arms just dangling there and so I put the, the top back down and then I took the screws out of the hinges that were right there then there was a second piece of plywood here over the top of this that was just screwed down so I took those screws out and I've been working on pulling off the the white colored paneling um, where you see the dark the dark wood underneath exposed that's all rotted in there um, and of course you can see, see the water damage there is pretty bad and uh, I've been poking around over here to see how bad this is and this right here this is really soft it's it's got to be replaced so probably going to take this probably going to take all this paneling off here all the way around and all the way across here because this wall is also soft up in there and um, this corner in particular is really bad I mean this is just you can see that's really bad this is squishy so you know the problem becomes that when I try to take these cabinets down I'll never be able to mount them back up to that wood again because it's it's just so rotted if I try to put any screws and weight in there it's all gonna fall down so today I'm gonna keep working on removing this paneling I'm gonna try to get these cabinets down and try to get the front opened up and we're gonna have really nice weather for several days so we're gonna peel off the front outer shell and uh, try to strip all this wood off and replace it so each of the cabinets this is one of the cabinets right here um, on the inside have a false panel um, so like right in here it's covered by a false panel um, it looks like a wall, like the wall of the cabinet, and you have to actually take these false panels off. Um, you have to find something that's small and flat that you can wedge into the corner and try to pry them out without destroying it. And I will say it is kind of difficult, but we were able to get it done without destroying or damaging those panels. Um... You can see right here, this is how they're tacked on um, with these little finish nails um, all the way around. Uh, so they're not glued, it's just uh, those little finish nails will probably pop right out of the um, paneling. And then when you put the paneling back on, um, you want to take these finish nails off and then reaffix it with new finish nails and then you can putty over the uh, holes that were left from before um, but that's how you get to the um, screws I'm trying to see where they were um, it's kind of backwards for me right now but once you get these once you get these off um, there's screws inside 
that hold the cabinets together and affix them to the wall. And that's the only way that you can get the cabinets off. So you got to take that, um, the false panel off. And then there's screws. You have to take the screws out. And then these cabinets will come right off of that, uh, off of the wall and the ceiling. And, uh, by the way, they're not attached to the ceiling. They're only attached to the side walls. Get the insulation all over you. You can take the insulation down. Let's see, throw that outside. We'll just buy new. For the outside here, um, again, I'm sorry we couldn't uh, record and take this off at the same time. Everything just kind of happened so fast. But on the outside here is a little strip of trim that goes all the way up and around. And it's got small screws. You can see the screw holes here. It has small screws that go all the way up. You have to take that trim and those screws off. And then once you take that off, you also have a, a piece of trim that goes across the top there. And ours was covered in um, like a silicone caulking uh, to prevent water leakage. And you have to get the silicone caulking off and then you have to pull that trim off. And then once you do that, there, there's uh, panels that go across the front here, and um, those panels will come off. Um, but we also had to take the window out first, and the window has screws on the inside of it. So you just take those screws out, and that window just lifts right out of the front. It, it actually was quite easy. You do need the help of someone else. You can't do that by yourself. If you do, then, you know, that's fantastic, but it'll be a lot easier with the second person. Um, so take the window out first, then take off the trim on the sides, take all the way down to the bottom, and then take the trim off of the top, and uh, be careful if you're repairing water damage. Um, as you can see, ours has just kind of fallen apart here because the water damage was so severe. So if you're up there and you're trying to get that off, just be careful you don't fall through and hurt yourself. And when we were taking the paneling off of the front and taking the, the cabinets down, there was um, a light fixture in the top of the cabinet that sits right in the middle. And um, all you have to do is unscrew that little light fixture and then disconnect the wires. And then the wires actually come out like this. And you, uh, depending on how much work you'll have to do, you may have to, uh, you know, take this out if you're going to 
have to replace this whole thing. But I'm actually going to rebuild this frame now. Um, you can see it's in pretty bad condition. But I have to get up there in the top and see how bad it is. I think there's damage probably going all the way back in there. Um, because I could see... I'm not sure actually. If the water was only coming in at the window, then I may be okay up there. But I have to see how far back I have to go because uh, if it goes back real far, then I have to pull the roof back. And um, another word of advice is that that rubber roofing material is extremely thin. It's very fragile, especially um, with these older units. And especially if you've had wood rotting underneath of it. Um, we had a small tear up there in the corner. And we're hoping that we don't have to go and buy new rubber material, but there are um, patch kits. So hopefully we can just patch that. Hopefully I don't have to pull the whole thing back. Um, so anyway, what I'm gonna do right now, and I won't be able to record myself doing it, is um, I'm gonna disassemble this frame that's falling down. I'm going to take it out and I'm going to rebuild it with the same exact measurements that are already here. And then we're going to put that back in. And I'm also going to be using some uh, more reinforced brackets to hold the pieces together. Okay, so upon further investigation, we um, figured out how far back the damage goes on the front here. Um, as you can see, this front section all the way back to here is rotted and that means that we're gonna have to take off um, I'll show you here in a minute but there's some trim on the outside on the top we're gonna take that off and peel the roof back some and the same things going on over here Pretty bad damage. I mean, it's all just falling apart. So we'll have to take that out. We're gonna try to only take it out to here and then um, sister the beams, meaning you overlap beams uh, to reinforce them when you can't put a beam, a long beam, all the way across. Um, you can't just tack in one little piece and attach it there and then expect that to hold when you're traveling 60 miles an hour down the highway. Um, so we're going to have to put in a piece of wood here and then probably another piece of wood that go spans across to here um, and then, you know, a double up on here. And then possibly make another frame here um, to add extra reinforcement. Something to that effect. But we want to make sure it's nice and sturdy. Okay, so I'm up on the roof now. You can see this gutter system here. And there's this little strip of trim right here. And this trim actually pops out. And there is... Um, screws hidden underneath of that and those screws and this trim are what's holding the roof down the whole length of the trailer so we have to take those screws out and the trim we're going to pull this trim out and take the screws out just far enough you can kind of see where the ridge right there it breaks down from the rotting so we're going to go all the way back just a little bit farther than the rotted part and we're going to pull this out just enough so that we can pull this rubber roof up and not have to take the entire trim down or pull the whole entire roof uh, cover, cover off. Um, but you got to be really careful with this stuff. It's really fragile, but um, I don't know if you can see pretty bad under there. I mean, that's just crumbling. It's really dangerous. 
I mean, especially if you're pulling this behind, say, uh, just a pickup truck. So you've got the full force of the wind on there. And if you're doing, you know, 55, 60 miles an hour on the highway, this thing's completely unstructurally sound. I think I said that right. <laughs> you know what I mean, guys. So anyway, um... That's what we're about to do. And uh, we'll be back. Here's another quick heads up. And uh, sorry if it's windy. Um, this is up on the roof here. And this is the gutter system that runs along the length. Um, but for these older units, if you have to take this off, what we found is that this stripping that runs along through here and covers the screws was very brittle and you have to take that out so you can get to these screws if you have to peel this roof covering up or if you have to take this panel off so just be prepared uh, with an older unit to have to replace the, the stripping the weather stripping that goes over the top of this because ours was just it, it just crumbles and falls apart you can see over there and also be prepared to replace screws these are pretty bad obviously the water has been getting in there well I was hoping I would get to keep these uh, lower cabinets in here and not have to mess with it but uh, since I've got some rot down here I'm going to go ahead and take the cabinets out. Um, also, it'll give me an opportunity to replace this whole length of this board that goes all the way down behind the cabinet rather than just framing it in up there. Same thing on this side. I suspect there's probably some rot here. You can see the water. Okay. And so to remove these cabinets, all you have to do is take these screws out. With these bottom ones, you don't have to remove the um, any kind of hidden panels. 